hope everyone's having a brilliant day out there. Coming live from the Natural Resource Department mm -hmm. of the Grand Traverse Band, the Badara and Chippewa Indians, uh, with the famous Desmond Berry, who's the head of department here. I don't know about famous. Uh, You're maybe, getting that way. Maybe a little infamous. Uh, <laughs> on the relatives, uh, we are live on two sites right now. Um, so we are live on the, the tribe site. So I say Ani, Buju, to uh, our relatives tuning in. Yep, and we're live on my page as well. Um, please go ahead and share this, get this in some groups, all the water protectors groups. This is some huge, huge news regarding uh, Enbridge Pipeline 5. For those of you who don't know what Enbridge Pipeline 5 is, uh, Desmond's going to give you a quick uh, overview of what the pipeline is and why it's an issue. Sure, so Enbridge Pipeline 5 was a pipeline that was installed in 1953. It is 645 miles long. It originates in Superior, Wisconsin, and then it traverses across the Upper Peninsula of Michigan where it hits the shores of Lakes Michigan and Huron in St. Ignace. And at that location, it splits into twin 20-inch pipelines that actually lay on the bottom of the Straits of Mackinac for about four and a half miles until it crosses over to Emmett County in Mackinac City. There it goes back to a 30-inch pipeline and it basically follows a route along I-75 down towards Bay City um, and then it crosses around the Port Huron area into Sarnia, Ontario. And it is a pipeline that moves 540,000 barrels of oil or about 23.5 million gallons um, of oil per day. Light, sweet, crude, as well as natural gas liquids. Um, and again, so this was placed there in 1953. And I have asserted that this pipeline um, is an illegal pipeline. And the reason I say that is because it was, it was placed there in 1953 um, and there was no consultation between the state of Michigan, the, one who, the ones who authorized this pipeline and this easement, and the tribal nations in Michigan. Michigan ha is home to 12 federally recognized tribes. Um, and out of those 12 federally recognized tribes, five of them have treaty rights under the 1836 Treaty of Washington. And what's important about that is that in the 70s, um, as Grand Traverse Band, as well as you know, other tribal nations, the, out of the five were asserting those treaty rights in the Great Lakes, they were prosecuted. Um, and persecuted as well by others, local uh, sports fishermen, etc. And so in 1979, after um, several of these prosecutions were taking place, a federal court judge ruled in favor of these five tribes that were signatory to the 1836 treaty. And as a result of that came a consent decree in 1985. That consent decree includes the five tribes, the state of Michigan, and the federal government. And what that consent decree did was basically allocate resources, but the, the key thing right now, as we're talking about Enbridge Line 5 and we're talking about Great Lakes management, the key thing is it also allocated management responsibility. And it made these five tribes co-managers of the Great Lakes. So that's kind of a quick update about Line 5 and the status of the five tribes in Michigan that have treaty rights. Um, from, a, from a legal standpoint, why we have standing in this argument. Um, aside from that, obviously the cultural and spiritual aspect of water and of what we can we, we call natural resources um, nowadays um, those as well are, are very important to this but I'm just speaking in regards to those treaty rights well absolutely and as you brought up the um, financial side talking a little mm -hmm. bit about resources can you clue people in a little bit as to um, the amount of money that is brought into Michigan from having the pipeline there, and also the amount of money that's brought into Michigan and the dependence of Michigan on the Great Lakes, as we mentioned, 
95% of the USA's sure. fresh surface water, 20% of the world's fresh surface water. What kind of figures are there regarding the uh, tourism industry, for example, the jobs that are related to it, that kind of thing? Well, the, the numbers we've been privy to, um, and, and I've, you know, it's also important to note that at 10.30 this morning, um, the state of Michigan did release an alternatives analysis report, which we've been expecting for quite some time. Um, I've made it about 65 pages through that report. Uh, it's 337 pages long, so I'm, I'm really not prepared to talk um, to that at this point in time. Uh, but there are some numbers in there, and you know the, the tourism industry uh, within the Great Lakes region is, is valued at about $37 billion per year. Um, the new alternatives analysis said Enbridge provides about $90 million to the state of Michigan, which um, includes a bunch of different things, tariffs, taxes. Um, you know, they're trying to claim 900 employees, but All if, right, you, well look at, cool. if you look at full and part-time employees, even in this new report, it's still 250 like we've been saying all along. See, what they're trying to do is they're trying, through this report that was just released, is they're trying to say, oh, because, you know, we contract with this guy and he decides to buy his products in Michigan, well, we're going to claim that too. So that's where the figure comes up to. But realistically, it's really about $25 million a year that Enbridge hey, pumps into Hey, let's be nice economy. to them. Let's be nice to them. Let's say it's a billion dollars. It, it still doesn't, doesn't, it make still any, doesn't stack doesn't up to thirty-seven billion. This, and, and isn't there some fishing on top of that? So the, the yeah, and, and that number hasn't changed. Um, that number for the commercial fishing industry and the recreational fishing industry in our Great Lakes is valued at seven billion dollars per year annually. So thirty-seven. So forty-four billion. And if we're nice to Enbridge, we can say they bring in a billion. So. Anyone out there, would you rather have $44 billion or $1 billion? That's kind of the maths on this thing. So they can play with their figures all they want. Right. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so that's given a little bit of background on that. Now, obviously, one of the things that's been happening, the people who've been watching, the, have been the Pipeline Safety Advisory Board meetings. And for the people that missed it, back in 2015, one of the things that, that was decided would be done would, there would, be, the, would be two different reports. There would be an alternatives analysis that Des just spoke about, and there would also be a risk assessment looking at the worst case scenario, when that pipeline breaks, what it was going to cost. That's um, correct. And they were commissioned, they were paid for by Enbridge, by two independent contractors, um, they put out bids for it, and in about 2016 they started this process. This process was supposed to produce both reports today, and about a week ago, the risks analysis uh, was found to be tainted. Um, Governor Schuette, um Bill Schuette, said that um, unfortunately one of the employees for the risk analysis had worked on another project with Enbridge, which was a conflict of interest, so they could no longer use the risk analysis report. So that was thrown to one side and we just had the alternatives analysis. Now, all along this process, there is supposed to have been tribal consultation. And can you talk a little bit about how that tribal consultation has looked so far, Des? Well, it's, it's been very slim, okay. Um, but I, what I will say is the tribes, the, the tribes in Michigan here do have consultation, okay. It is scheduled with Michigan Department of Environmental Quality at this time. It's also scheduled with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I don't know what the consultation will, will necessarily look like. Um, I know that we will get in the same room around the same table and we will share our concerns. Nobody has said how our concerns are going to be weighed in this decision-making process. So I know that much, um, but prior to this, prior to, well, I would say within the last year, a lot of pressure and a lot of light being um, shined on this subject and this area, uh, the tribal consultation process lacked very much. In fact, we just met with Enbridge for the first time this calendar year and they've had a pipeline in our Great Lakes in which since 1979 we've had equal management authority of. This is the first time they've con consulted with us. It's taking them a little time to get to you. 
Sure, but again, Maybe that would be our, our, our concerns haven't been, you know, they've been heard, they haven't been addressed. So there hasn't been a lot of weight given to them. I'm looking uh, very much forward to consultation with the DEQ and consultation with the Army Corps of Engineers, and I'm very optimistic. I'm going in there with an open mind, hoping for the best. Um, but that leads us to, to actually this announcement and the reason why um, I was very excited about this. Absolutely. So do you want to share a little bit about what we have on the, on the table here, which is quite thick, quite a, quite a number of papers here. What, what's going on that is uh, so important that we needed to uh, make this special well, live stream to announce to I, announce this? Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and what I'll do is, what I'm holding right now is a, a certification of Tribal Council Action. And I understand you probably can't read it, but I just want you to see. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to open up by reading from this, and then I'm going to read a little bit here, um, after, after I read this. So, Certification of Tribal Council Action, Special Session of June 28, 2017, Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians. I hereby certify as the Tribal Council Secretary that the foregoing motions were approved and adopted at the Special Session of the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians Tribal Council. The uh, topic was Line 5, MDEQ, as in Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, Petition to Intervene. Motion made by Tribal Council Secretary Roll and supported by Tribal Council Member Showman to authorize the petition to intervene to be filed with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality on June 29, 2017, seeking party status and a request for a public hearing. Now, that motion passed unanimously. Second motion, motion made by Tribal Council Member Showman and supported by Tribal Council Secretary Roll to authorize the manager of the Natural Resources Department, which is myself, to demand that the risk report commissioned by the Michigan Pipeline Safety Advisory Board and all related documents be released to the public. Again, that motion passed unanimously. Now, what you're looking at here is a 39-page petition. It's a legal brief entitled Petition to Intervene with Request to Public Hearing. And I'm not going to read the entire thing because I would bore everybody to death, okay, with regards to all of this Rule 322.1017, subparagraph I, Rule 17, subparagraph I of the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. So in the nutshell, no rules. In a I'm not going to go through that. <laughs> So I'm just going to do a, a real quick here, introduction, as reported in the article dated June 2nd, 2017, parentheses, Enbridge was violating Line 5 easement for years, document show, and parentheses, by breaching the terms of the 1953 easement. The applicant has forfeited any claimed right to continued operation pending resolution of legal issues raised in this petition. These chronic violations warrant an immediate order shutting down the dual pipelines extending through the Straits of Mackinac, referenced in this petition as Line 5, or at least restricting use of those segments only to natural gas liquids. Nonetheless, the Department and the Attorney General may be reluctant unilaterally to issue such order without completing the likely and feasible prudent alternative analysis required by Michigan law. Now that's very important. Okay, feasible and prudent alternative analysis. That's language right from the Michigan law. If so, and as an interim measure, the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians does not oppose issuance of a conditional permit, okay, this is very important, authorizing 22 additional anchor supports for the segments of Line 5 extending through the Straits of Mackinac. However, key, however, such conditional per permit 
should not relieve either the department or the applicant from compliance with the mandates of Michigan law to determine, parentheses, potential adverse environmental effects, and parentheses, of the continued operation of line five, whether any such adverse effects are minimal and that there is no feasible and prudent alternative to the act applicant's proposed activity consistent with reasonable requirements of the public health, safety, and welfare. Upon information and belief, the current operation of Line 5 is substantially different from what was authorized in 1953, and therefore, it is not valid to conclude that the purpose of the proposed construction work, we're talking about the anchors, is routine maintenance for Line 5 pipelines as originally authorized and constructed. Upon information and belief in recent years, credible information has revealed that Line 5 is likely to pollute and or impair the water and other natural resources within the Straits of Mackinac and the public trust in these resources, thus triggering applicably, applicability of MCL, that's the Michigan law. Therefore, the Grand Traverse Band formally requests the department to conduct a hearing as authorized by Rule 17 because Line 5 within the Straits of Mackinac is controversial because additional information is desired before action by the department and because such request is made within the public notice period. As you realize, today was the end of the public notice period to comment on the 22 anchors. We filed this before the day's end. This is how you intervene and gain the, that status. The Michigan Environmental Protection Act authorizes the Grand Traverse Band to intervene in this administrative proceeding. The intent of the following allegations and cited exhibits merely is to establish the threshold basis for the tribe's intervention. After the initial public comments are reviewed and additional facts are established during the hearing, the Grand Traverse Band requests, parentheses, and reserves, and parentheses, an opportunity to provide the department with a comprehensive analysis of the elements to be considered under the mandates of the Michigan law, Rule 15, of the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act administrative rules. Now it goes into the allegations supporting our intervention and it goes into a whole bunch of legalese both beyond there um, as well as exhibits um, and declarations of scientists that we have worked with for 25 years as well as other exhibits um, including uh, findings from federal courts um, in regards to facts um, with the Straits of Mackinac um, we also have prepared and submitted cultural statements from our elders here speaking to the, the cultural and spiritual aspects of the Straits of Mackinac because we see it more than just a source of revenue or economic value to the state of Michigan. It's, it's more than that for the Grand Traverse Band. It's more than that for the 12 federally recognized tribes. Um, also, we, we added into our exhibits um, harvest, fish harvest, so we can show that these are traditional fishing areas to the Grand Traverse Band. Um, and we have a whole bunch of other statements from a whole lot of other uh, experts in here. We will be making this document public. Everyone will have an opportunity to read it. Um, but you know why I'm incredibly excited about this is because the tribe is using Michigan law, Michigan law, okay, to insert ourselves into this request for permit for anchors, and we're inserting ourselves into this through a legal me mechanism that's supported under two different, it's supported under the Michigan Environmental Protection Act as well as supported under the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not professing to be one, um, but I work very closely with, with a number of lawyers, and I pay attention, and I ask a lot of questions, so I can sound intelligent when I speak on these issues. Um, 
So the bottom line is, we are filing to intervene. We are going to have ourselves at the table. We are going to be provided an opportunity to make decisions on this line going forward. We're not going to request any longer to speak at public hearings. We're not going to have people, if you're at, Kevin, you were at the last Pipeline Safety Advisory Board meeting. Matter of fact, you know, for those who weren't there, I, I was, I was very upset, very distraught, but I think Kevin took it even further than me because he seen and recognized the emotion and the pain and the hurt and the sorrow coming out of one of our tribal leaders uh, from Grand Traverse Band. But not only that, we were on the reservation of the Little Traverse Bay Bands of Odawa Indians, and they had several of their elected leaders there who were denied an opportunity to speak to. So Kevin got to witness um, what we've been dealing with for a number of years. So the point of filing as intervener in this is because now we don't have to ask for permission. Okay, we are inserting ourselves into this process under the rule of law. So we are going to be at that table. We are going to be decision makers in this. And if anybody tries to deny it, well, obviously, um, you're denying law. You're denying the rule of law. So that's why I was so excited last night. That's why I'm so excited today. Um, granted, it's an administrative process, and it's it's. Uh, very first step in a, in a lengthy battle that, you know, a number of tribal nations and a number of, uh, of uh, non-government organizations have been working on, um, but we're there. We've, we've crossed a, a threshold today with this petition for um, intervener status, intervener status, sorry. So in, a, so in a nutshell, because a lot of this has gone straight over my head, um, and... <laughs> I mean, I, I don't deal with a lot of legal. Let's see if I can kind of summarize this as I understand it and see, mm -hmm. it, and, mm -hmm. and see if that's correct. So by filing this document, what it's going to give the Grand Traverse Band of Durham Chippewa Indians the ability to do is actually to be sat at the table with equal rights alongside the Michigan Department of Equi uh, Environmental uh, Equality. Uh, Correct. Uh, alongside the, the governor, alongside the attorney general, alongside the... Um, rest of the stakeholders that have been at that table. It's going to add you as one of those stakeholders at that table. This is going to throw us right into the mix with the DEQ. So instead of speaking from the floor, hoping to get two minutes on a microphone, you're going to be sat at the table listening to the people who have the opinions and have the things that are happening around the, pub around the public opinion and be able to uh, have a say as to what happens going forwards. That's correct, but not only that, but then have the authority to make decision on this. Not just hear it, not just, like, like right now how we've been treated during consultation is, you and I sit here and we, and we have a discussion and I tell you everything I want and everything I need and all of my concerns, but you have the ultimate authority and you say, okay, thanks a lot Desmond, you shake my hand, you walk out the door and you get in your vehicle and you look at Stephanie and you say, I don't care what he wants, this is what I'm doing. Right. And you that's know, because it's... there's been no teeth, there's been no, no authority there. This is a way to insert ourselves into the process and, and assert authority in the decision-making part of this. You know, and, and this is how it should be because I've said this a number of times. Okay? The Anishinaabek people, the original people of this area have always been, always been the caretakers of Mother Earth and the protectors of water. You know, water protector is a big word right now. Well, guess what? My ancestors here in, in this region have been that since time, since forever. So that's why it's important to have tribes at the table for this. So because you've done this as the Grand Travers Band, is the potential for the other Michigan tribes to do exactly the same thing? Well, I know the potential would be there for the other four Michigan tribes that have tr the treaty rights to the 1836. But likely, the other Michigan tribes have treaties as well. Okay? They have treaties as well. I'm, I know the Treaty of 1836. Right. I know the Treaty of 1855. I don't know the treaties, um, say, for instance, the Lower Peninsula, and I mean Southern Michigan tribes, 
function under. Mm -hmm. So they could quite potentially have the same ability. So once again, the Grand Travis Band of Durham Chippewa Indians, and particularly the Natural Resources Department, have taken the lead in this battle to shut down Line 5 and is showing the way for other, other tribes and other people to be able to make a difference here, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's all because of this certification of tribal council action. Uh -huh. It's all because of the elected leadership here standing for what's right. And when and, you said, you said that was a unanimous, by unanimous you mean every single member of your tribal council voted in favor of doing this? That's correct. Now there were a couple absent yesterday um, because they are on travel. They, you know, you just seen a bunch of stuff with right. with uh, the president and you know the tribal gathering and stuff. So there were a couple of tribal councilors absent, um, but it's irrelevant because if they were here, they would have voted in favor of it. You know, because they knew of this, they read this uh, prior to the meeting electronically, uh -huh. and, and you know, so they, they knew of it, they support it, they just didn't have the opportunity to vote because they were on travel, um, taking care and, and fighting for other environmental issues um, that affect the state of Michigan. So No, absolutely. We've got a couple of questions here. One, one is, can you convene your own public hearing once you've been inserted into the process? I don't know the answer to that. That's a great question. This, is, this is new territory. This will be, you know, I, I guess it's a great question. And I, I don't know the answer to it, but um, uh, we, we, we are definitely going to de demand that the, the a prudent and alternative risk analysis be done. Okay, just like under Michigan law says if it's controversial, says if there's an opportunity to impair the resource or, or cause pollution under NEPA, with an M, Michigan Environmental Protection Act, mm -hmm. okay, the state of Michigan does have to produce that risk analysis. So we're definitely going to force that issue, you know. Because um, the risk analysis was never done for this when this pipeline was put in. So exactly. it's effectively like an environmental impact st 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 statement. There you go. Except uh, under state law. Under state law as opposed to federal law. Correct. Um, so people are going to question, well, if this pipeline is really dangerous and Enbridge are looking to put in these 22 anchors to be good people and to make sure this pipeline is as safe as possible, mm -hmm. is this going to stand in the way of Enbridge doing that? Um, no, this should not. See, the, if the anchors are a requirement, it's one thing. Okay, but like we said in this opening brief, the pipeline has changed. The original intent of the pipeline has changed mm -hmm. okay, from the 1953 easement. So they still have those violations, eight of them, eight separate violations of that easement. Um, if this makes the pipeline safe, nobody wants to prevent that. But everybody understands that pipelines aren't safe. Right, no, don't, okay. don't, 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 don't misquote me. I'm not saying I'm make not it misquoting safe. you. I'm saying make it safe by having those in place. You know what the safest thing is is to yank it out, right. throw it away, right? Turn That's... it into turn it into scrap metal and, oh, and make electric hybrid vehicles yeah, out of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right. Well, I don't want or make uh, wind turbines out of it. Right. Um, but but people don't want pe correct. So that people don't spin this as say, well, the tribe are, are getting in the way of Enbridge making it safer. So that's what absolutely I not thing. not getting in the way of making it safer. Right there again, we are not objecting to these twenty two anchors. Okay, what we are saying is, if you go forward and authorize these twenty two anchors, then you must, under Michigan law, two separate Michigan laws, you must do a prudent and and alternative analysis you must do a, a I think it's feasible and prudent alternatives analysis is how it's written in Michigan law in two separate areas the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act as well as the Michigan Environmental Protection Act so that's the bottom line if you're going to authorize them you have to do the risk analysis prudent feasible and prudent alternatives analysis perfect so people, I know people are coming in partway through, and, and, and we'll do another we'll do another live stream on this with maybe a little less legal speak, and maybe I'll be able to get hold of some of these documents and put them up on the screen as we talk through them um, as well. They're right there in front of you. Yeah. So. But we, I can do. You can have a hold of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get 
39 pages to look at that I won't understand <laughs> at all. <laughs> but I can get the Tribal Council uh, certificate as well. Um, yeah. Um, let me see. Here was the... Uh... So, this is really, really good news, guys. Um, keep watching this space. Let me, let me read this, too. This was the... Uh... Yeah, so I read the, the certification of tribal council action that came out of the meeting yesterday. But let me read the agenda request that was put together. Um, so every time we ask to be placed on a tribal council agenda, we have to fill out this, this form. And some of the things uh, we have to do is uh, define a purpose, um, as well as come up with a title, and then come up with an outcome requested. And then we have to submit materials with this. So the and it, and it goes to the council a good week in advance. Okay, so then they have an opportunity to review like a cover sheet and then review what it is uh, we're asking. So the purpose, um, I'm just gonna read this. The, uh, and this was the cover sheet to the agenda request that was submitted about a week ago. On June 21st, 2017, the state, MDEQ, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, announced that it was terminating the Michigan Pipeline Safety Advisory Board contract for line five risk analysis. If GTB files a petition to intervene by the June 29th deadline for comments, we can make an argument that Michigan law requires the MDEQ and Enbridge to complete both risk studies as a part of the feasible and prudent alternatives standard applicable if line five in the Straits of Mackinac is likely to pollute or impair the water and fishery, etc. resources of the Straits. That's the case, guys. We, there's, there's, it's a no-brainer to know that um, this pipeline is likely to pollute both the water and the fishery and all the other aquatic organisms and resources in the Straits. Uh, if MDEQ, uh, I'm not going to read that. That's legal strategy. So I'm not going to go into that one, that last line. But anyway, that was the purpose um, to place this on the agenda. And then the outcome was uh, requested was by motion approved filing the attached petition to intervene with referenced exhibits. And I read you the a very small portion of the uh, introduction. So, so what's next from here, Des? So obviously we're going to keep live streaming and let people know what's happening. But what's next in what's next in this process? Now this has been filed. What do you expect? What do you expect to see happening in regards to moving forward? I expect to see some. Uh, Letters back and forth between the tribal attorneys and the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. Um, I even expect to see uh, some Enbridge legal getting involved and perhaps trying to keep us out uh, of this process through the DEQ and, and probably offering support to the DEQ. Um, I expect the decision to happen really quick within a couple of weeks. Um, and again, if, if, if there's any static on this, it's very easy to demonstrate that they're in violation of their own laws. Because, you know, we have the opportunity and the ability to do this under their own laws. Yeah, it's not like you pulled some, some, some law that's specific to, no. to tribal nations. You, no, you, no. <laughs> so uh -huh. this, is, this is a very, very... Very, very smart move from everything I expect, I know about I expect it. other non-government organizations to follow suit and do the same thing as well. Oh, so this, this could be done by, for example, oil and water don't mix or flow or people, people like this that? Be, this can be done by Sierra a lot Club. of folks. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's how the Michigan law is written. So if anyone knows people with Sierra Club, uh, 350.org, um, flow, um, Women's League of Voters, uh, any of those people, any of those groups, um, maybe you want to look into this closely and see whether you can also uh, force a place at the table. There you go. That's really cool. And it's, um, it's in regards to the public's interest. That's and we're public, all of us. We're all citizens here, so there you have it. That's really awesome. And so, do you expect this to even go to court? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, you know, it would end up in circuit court in one of the counties or around the straits. Um, and, and how would a judge, how would a judge actually say no when the law is very clearly defined that we have the ability to insert ourselves as interveners into this? Great. Because
because it's it's a controversial b has a ability to cause irreparable harm to a public resource which is protected under the Michigan Environmental Protection Act as well as the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. So this same kind of idea could be used in any other pipelines that cross into Michigan? If it, w if it falls under the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act? Yes. Absolutely. Cool. Cool stuff to think about. Yeah. So Kind of um, nifty. Watch this space for more and thanks for joining. Be sure to share this out. Be sure to go and like the GTB official hyphen protectors of mother earth page to be able to follow the news first from the grand travers band too take care guys miigwech and bama pete miigwech